It's December 2010. I'm at Virginia Mesa Medical Center with my mom, Jeannie. Thank God my sister Lonnie is here also. We have been waiting for over three weeks for these test results. Mom doesn't understand how serious this is. Lonnie and I both know the implications. I'm bracing for the worse. Lisa, I don't know Dr. Roberts. Mom, yes you do. Remember, you've met him at least three times. Dr. Roberts and I were on the Kaizen Clinical Committee together. I really trust him. Dr. Roberts' face confirms what I already know. Mrs. Pumphrey, you have Huntington's disease. There is no cure. This can't be real. What the hell are we going to do? I'm a medical professional. I've got this. I'm going to be prepared for whatever comes our way. Fast forward six months, I'm secretary for our state chapter of the Huntington's Disease Society of America. I'm even training for my first ever triathlon. I don't swim. <laughs> I haven't biked in forever. <laughs> and runners, uh, they're a little touched. <laughs> For me, it's all about the fundraising. It's 2 a.m. No, it's not 2 a.m. just yet. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I'm just finishing up a bike ride when my sister Lonnie calls. Lisa, meet me at the hospital. I can't do this anymore. Mom's living with Lonnie and her young family. I've promised Mom I'd never put her in one of those homes. It's 2 a.m. Hello, Lee. I'm so sorry, I won't be in clinic today. I have to move my mom. 4 a.m., I eat a banana. I can be out for a run by 5. 7 a.m., I'm with mom, eating the finest hospital oatmeal with butter and brown sugar. By 11 a.m., I'm signing admission papers to St. Anne's Rehab. I miss work two more times that week. Mom escapes six times within two months. Each time, I find her picking blackberries across from Nathan Hale High School. At work, I'm rolling out three new clinics. I miss two deadlines and three critical meetings. Do I need to step down? I've worked so hard to get here. I move mom two more times within eight months. Why is this such a challenge? I just want her to be safe and happy. Today is my oldest nephew Tyrell's wedding. When I pull up, mom is ready to go. The nurses 
put mom in my car and her wheelchair in my trunk. I park in the furthest row from the venue. No one will see me struggle. While lowering mom into the chair, it rolls back. Girl, I forgot to lock the brake. At the reception, mom is blissfully happy. I'm too exhausted to even dance. That night, in my mirror, I don't recognize my own face. Two weeks later, after launching our three new clinics, I resign. Two months pass. I'm at the beautiful Waikoloa Beach Resort. It's the day of my triathlon. My numbers, nine, two, five, are stenciled in black. My group starts, and before the first swim turn, I am throwing up. On my bike ride, I'm swerving all over the place. The officials flag me into the medical tent. I'm hooked up to an IV. Something has to give. I feel completely responsible for every detail of mom's care, constantly questioning whether my choices are even good enough. If I'm going to continue this caregiving journey, I have to make more time for me. I have to let go. I'm taking little steps now. I no longer visit from dawn to dark. And I'm even starting to trust the care staff. On the weekdays, I leave after I've eat after mom has eaten dinner. <laughs> the other night, I cooked my favorite homemade pizza with sausage, roasted red bell peppers, and fresh garlic. I even read through Running Magazine. <laughs> it feels so good to just relax. On the weekends, I arrive after my workout. The other day, I called my friends, Rashida, Alicia, and Paulette. Let's go to dinner at Montezuma's and then see Magic Mike. <laughs> We're meeting at five. When visiting mom, I focus on staying more present. Sunday, we scroll through family photos on my phone. I enjoy spending this time with mom. Mom loves the milkshakes I bring her daily. Chocolate or strawberry, no vanilla. <laughs> she seems more excited for the milkshakes than she does for me. Little by little, I learn to let go and make more time for me. Mom still gets what she needs. For her, it's about the little things. It's about connection. I now welcome what is, let go of what should be, 
Caring for mom is a privilege. Reconnecting to me is the journey. Thank you.